Opa galera, começando mais um Rock in Chats, hoje com DC Cooper. Hi DC, how are you? Hey, what's going on man? How are things there? Um, it's been really nice, the weather's been great today, it was super hot, you know, but um, yeah, it's good. It's, it's a nice city, I like it. Great. Uh, I'm calling from a city near Sao Paulo, which you've been uh, back in 99, right? In Sao yeah, Paulo? Long, seems like a long time ago, but man, I have great, I have great memories there. Yes, I remember when I, I first listened to Royal Hunt, was the Moving Target album. I always regarded this album as a very sophisticated hard rock album if mm -hmm. you know what i mean it sounds mm -hmm. very classy you know and, sure yeah and uh, wow Change your up. <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah what a great start for you with the the band right uh, what are the memories from that album because because you seemed very comfortable with the music oh wow hey that's a great that's a really great 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 question i don't think anybody's ever asked that um <laughs> what was going on in my life at the time and everything i mean i had wanted to you know i just wanted somebody to give me a chance you know i was with local bands for years you know with like really little success and stuff you know you were you know happy to have a good show in pittsburgh or, or out whatever you know and um I was with a band here from Pittsburgh, and we were dead serious, you know, we were traveling to New York and everything like that to go and for record deals and banging on people's doors and trying to corner people from the music industry just to say, here's my demo, you know, and um, we had a management company, um, CMI, Hernando Courtright in New York City, who was representing us to try to get us a deal, and he, um, I was in a meeting with him, and he said, hey, um, you know, do you want to go... Uh, I can't I can't get a deal for your band, but I think I can find a band for you if you're willing to go to Europe. And I said, you know, I said, giddy up, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, it went through a couple different demo tapes and stuff like that from other bands in Europe and stuff. And then the thing from Royal Hunt popped up and, you know, something felt right. I did the demo. They flew me over like a month later. It all happened super fast. Went out on tour with them, you know, did five months on tour all over the world, and it was pretty cool, you know. So I went from being in a local Pittsburgh band, you know, I'd been in music since I was 14, so I was always doing that, mm -hmm. to here you are in Japan or Germany or Switzerland or, you know. Yeah. So yeah. it, I don't know, it, it felt comfortable. It did, it felt comfortable, and I just kind of ran with it, you know, and, um, The Moving Target tour was really, you know, whenever I got to do my first international album, um, it was pretty, it was great. It was a great experience, and I'm glad that, you know, that's one of the things I'm grateful for in life, you know, that that kind of stuff happened. So, um, it was a great feeling. I mean, it was a big moment in my life where I was actually recording my first album that I knew was going to go worldwide. And, you know, obviously I wanted to impress the, impress the band, I wanted to impress Andre, so I, I definitely put my heart and soul into it, I guess, you know. I guess whenever you're in that situation where you're putting your heart on the line, you know, you're going to maybe put a little bit more into it, you know. And I hate to say it, which brings up a point of, you know, I've been on 34 albums total in my career, and I got a couple more that's coming up soon, so... Um, You know, some of those albums like Moving Target and everything like that, those were the most important, you know. And it's a shame that now, 34 albums later, I don't want to say it's less important, but it's become some somewhat such a business. I see, that, I see. And you, and you have to stay in the business, so you have, you have to survive. So, you, you know, you have to keep doing stuff. And, yeah. Um, a lot of the love, I, I you know... It, it, I, I miss the, that true passion, like that true deep desire to want something. And I wanted it bad, you know, like any musician. Yep. Yeah, but... Uh, I'm sorry, I'm getting all philosophical on you here. <laughs> you know, I'm, I've been in the business a lot of years, and I've just enjoyed the hell out of it. There's, it's, there's been highs and lows and sideways and everything, but 
um, there's been a couple changes in my life over the past two years that's kind of made me want to like really give one nice big final push and get some of the material that I've written you know over the years I have enough music for three albums <laughs> wow. there's a long story behind why it took so long and a lot of it had to do with me joining Silent Force right okay. after the solo album so that you know in retrospect looking back you know that probably wasn't the best decision okay you know um i love silent force i loved working with them we had a blast they were great musicians you know but we sh i should have followed through right away with the next solo album um to but if pick up it was a, the moment right yeah, to stay with it because once, you know, and I don't want to say I was forced away from it from my management company and everything, but they were the ones who put me in Silent Force together. And I made my own decision, and that's on my shoulders. Yep. Uh, do you still have contact with the guys that recorded that album? The guys from Pink Cree and Tor Osby? Um, we don't stay in constant touch or anything. You know, every once in a while our paths will cross. Um, actually, I haven't seen any of the guys from Pink Cream and Tor well, I've seen Tori once since then, but we all were together in, uh, at Prague Power, I don't know, it was like 2008, maybe, or 2009, let me see, 2008 sounds right, um, where we did a solo show, but it was acoustic, you know, but also with electric guitars and everything. And it turned out that Tori was doing a reunion show with Conception. Pink Cream 69 was playing, so they were both there. So I got together with the promoter from Pog Power, and we ended up doing um, an acoustic show. But all the guys from Pink Cream were on stage. Um, I had, what, five? Yeah, there was 13 people on stage doing the show with me. It was really cool. So now I don't con you know, I don't normally stay in contact with them, but um, you know they're fantastic guys. So you know I'll always be indebted to them because they were part of that first solo album, which was really you know a, a, it, it was a top album of any of the ones I've done. Um, I really love your your solo album. Um, right. Are you into? that uh, classic hard rock music are you into classic rock AOR um man that's hard to say you know I was thinking about actually something like that a couple days ago because there's so many genres and sub genres of rock and metal and this and that yeah yeah so many different things that I don't even classify what I listen to to anything because I, li I you know depends on what mood I'm in, it depends on the biggest thing is I can actually be scrolling through like the the uh, satellite channels or something like that on the radio in the car Yep. and um, you know if it's a good melody and there's a good hook or there's a good beat or something I'm going to listen to it and I'll listen to, I'll end up like listening to that genre for a day now Foreigner was probably one of my top favorites you know any of the Foreigner tunes I was raised on them too so yeah I mean that would probably be like my top AOR band yep um, great you know but Toto has played you know I was actually I was waiting I was hoping you were going to say that like Toto <laughs> or yes. um, Don Henley or let's see let's see what's else um, you know something that has substance to it you know Peter Gabriel wow Big, you know those are the two probably as far as that, that really set me off for progressive music You know, um, Peter Gabriel and Toto, those, they, I've been listening to them since I was young, too. But um, Saga was another one. Oh, great. Um, Saga was just absolutely a fantastic band. I was close to working with Ian Crichton once. Um, he was actually going to come perform in Pittsburgh on a show, but he had a family situation. He couldn't come. Let's talk about the concert you did here in 99. Uh, with Pink Cream 69 yeah. and Primal Fear. Uh, what are yeah. the memories from that concert? It's been a long time. I really, uh, it's one of the concerts I remember very well. There was a lot of pissed off fans, and I don't blame them because I can remember getting to the, I can remember getting to the venue, and I think Pink Cream went on, then DC Cooper went on, and then it was supposed to be Primal yeah. Fear. Um. 
and what there was three other bands, local bands or something like that, like ahead of us. And whenever I got there, the the doors weren't even open yet, and I was actually planning. I was planning on getting there like right as Pink Cream was going on stage. So whenever I got there to the venue, it was way, 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 way late, and there was a riot going on in the streets. And I'm like, "What the hell's going on?" They're like, "Yeah, yeah, we're definitely behind schedule." <laughs> so that's one of the big things that jumps out in my mind. Um, of, oh my gosh, there was a show that we did. Because we got on a bus, it was, you know, like a tour bus, but it was like a, a regular kind of bus. And man, I can't remember where we drove out into the middle of nowhere. This was with the solo band. And we were in Brazil, because we played Sao Paulo, and then we were going somewhere else. And um, we showed up at this little town in the middle of yep. nowhere. <laughs> And it was supposed to be a full-blown show, and we got there, and there was one microphone and, like, two lights pointing onto this stage. <laughs> and that was it. The, and, and we're, like, we ended up, we af actually left. The show never happened because there was just, we couldn't do the show. <laughs> we had, like, we had, like, guitars and a bass and drumsticks, you know, because we were hiring everything out. Um, you know, we weren't traveling with a full production. So, um, we were on this bus, and it's like... Wow. Was this only a uh, you know, DC Cooper band, or the whole crew? Yes, it was only the DC Cooper band, because I can remember... Oh, man, this is a devastating memory. <laughs> hey. I can remember somebody throwing a DC Cooper CD case at the bus, and it hitting the window, and I'm sitting there going like, oh, man, this is not our fault, everybody. Wow. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm going to have to do some research man. now. Because now you just, peaked that, you just peaked that memory. Yeah, I didn't know that. <laughs> um, to everybody in Brazil, I can remember whenever I was there, you know, only just, what, basically just once. Um, I had a blast. You know, the enthusiasm from everybody was great, and I can't wait to come back again. Um, I appreciate anybody who's listening and actually gives a shit about DC Cooper and anything. Um, I appreciate you sticking with me for years, you know, listening to this stuff and staying, you know, staying in touch and staying, you know, keeping tabs on me. Um, I'm hoping to do a big push, you know, and I'm going to need everybody's help, though. You know, if this is going to work, I need, you know, fans from years ago. If you're still listening, you know, hang in there a little bit oh, longer. Oh, great. It's <laughs> so, DC, I'd like to thank you very much. Take care, you too, buddy. Bye.